All right, we are here at my Vermi Hut indoor worm bin, and the first thing I notice is there are just tons of castings. And that makes sense because we noticed just a lot of worms last time. We're also gonna check on the last feeding, and there were some zucchini and tomatoes in there. And then finally, we're gonna do a new experiment, and that is fruit versus veggies. And we'll see which ones the worms go after more. So we'll just start digging in, and I feel if the temperature feels great, it all feels the same throughout, but we'll just kind of scrape off the top and right away there's a, <laughs> a little worm going right there. It looks like a red wiggler to me. And this worm bin has both red wigglers and blue worms, and I'm starting to see them both. Uh, peach seed. I always want to take this out, but then I decide not to. It just feels like it's never going to disappear. But all kinds of worms in here. And we'll keep digging in. In fact, why don't we just go for it? Let's just pull out and see what we have here. And this worm bin never disappoints. Just a bunch, even a baby right there. But just a bunch of worms. That is fantastic. And this is the feeding zone, so I'm not seeing anything in there. And we fed kind of the standard banana peel and I think some apple pieces. But we also fed a zucchini that I hadn't fed before, and a tomato slice. I hear some people talk about not feeding tomatoes, but I think in general, whoa, look at that. <laughs> oh yeah. I think in general, you can feed your worm bins in moderation, almost any plant-based food. So let's keep going. And this is, I feel like this is a great depth too. Sometimes the trays weren't getting full very much and I just didn't feel like that enough castings were being produced because I was having to go to the next tray because I just didn't start with enough bedding and put enough food in. But doing a great job throughout here. They really are. So we'll just keep digging through. And right now this bin has three trays on it. The middle one is actually the one with the most castings and they're actually getting close to being ready to be harvest but again lots of worms throughout and this came from the corner so there's just worms in and out of here all over the place i just there's so many castings i think it was like maybe two or three weeks ago that we said we were at 50 50 castings but there is a rapid acceleration into castings um, from the bedding this is a huge right there. You can see the swollen clitellum on this red wiggler right here. So anyway, yeah, there's just so many castings in here. And I put bedding in every time. I haven't stopped the bedding, which I normally do when we're getting towards castings. But in these systems, you know, they finish their castings below the active feeding tray. In fact, this tray itself is only 75 days old. And here we have a mini swarm of red wigglers probably knocking into each other and potentially about to mate, which I just interrupted, but that's a good sign right there and a little one. But so this bin, this tray was starting 75 days ago and it has had 10 feedings. This will be the 11th feeding. Maybe a couple more feedings from now, a couple weeks maybe, is when it will become one of the bottom trays. So I'm just gonna finish with these other corners Again, every handful, tons of worms, not seeing feeding zone, anything. This is a bit of a banana top, which I think was put in there maybe two or three times ago, but they it is completely mushy. The kind of big things I am seeing are toilet paper rolls that I've cut up and torn up. So those look like they're taking a little bit longer than the rest of the bedding, but everything else is doing well. And those do well too, just again, the more you finely cut up or shred your cardboard or your food for that matter, the more surface area, the quicker the worms can get to it. This is just looking fantastic. Every handful has tons of worms in it. So we're gonna set up the feeding zone and kind of talk about fruits first veggies. I've put lots of both in here and haven't really taken notice of which goes faster or better, which they prefer. So I'm gonna kind of be real direct with it. I'm gonna put one fruit and one veggie in here and we'll see which one they like. And they have, they have encountered both in my worm bins and taken care of both of them. So let's go ahead and take a peek of what's that, what that's gonna be. 
and I have an apple which kind of got bruised or started rotting in the group of apples I had. And this is a uh, sweet potato that had gone a little too long in the fridge and it had kind of a slimy coat. I was gonna try and wash it and peel it and then it just, it wasn't gonna happen. So this is the fruit versus veggies that we're gonna be experimenting with. But first, let's lay down some shredded cardboard. Then we'll put the apple on this side and I'm actually gonna pierce the peel here to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a head start because the sweet potato broken open from its peel. So we have the same parameters for both of them. Now, these are about equal in size and feels like same weight. The densities are probably the same. Maybe this is more dense than an apple would be. Probably this has more moisture than the sweet potato. In general, these are about the same size. So it should be uh, an, an even experiment here to see which they prefer. And I'm not going to put any other food in here except these two. In fact, I'm going to put the, I'm going to kind of bury them down a little bit more. And they've both been frozen. They've both been frozen and thawed. In fact, refrozen and then thawed again. So they're both getting the exact same kind of parameters. I'm going to add just a little bit more bedding over the top. And then we'll add our normal coffee. That's kind of a lot. That's all right, because there are just a ton of worms in here. And then we'll do our grit, which is just pulverized eggshells that I put in a jar. And I think that is about it. So let's start covering up and we'll see how this experiment goes. And I'm gonna check on these about every, oh, there's a worm right there. I'm gonna check on these about every five days just to kind of get an idea of how things are going, check the temperature, that kind of thing, because I wanna make sure that I'm getting all the information or data collected from this experiment and see how they are doing, because I may show up in seven days and then there's nothing going on because they've eaten it all. But I expect this will take probably 10 to 14 days is what I'm guessing. In fact, put your guess in the comments one, which do you think will go faster, the sweet potato or the apple? And then two, how long do you think it'll take before they go? And I've done other experiments in all my bins. I've got three bins, three playlists, so you can check there from start to finish castings. If you want to subscribe, I appreciate it. That'll help you know when I do things and also uh, like it. I'd appreciate that too. So that will do it for the experiment. We're going to check back in five days. I really appreciate you all watching the videos, and I hope everybody's having a great day. Happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.